you need to drink something? <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Shut up. All right, before we get started, there's a few basic principles you have to remember. Fuel, air, spark. Without those three elements, you're not gonna have an engine that runs, right? So the very first thing that you gotta do with all these newer style mowers that have your operator presence level lever, in other words, this up here, your operator presence, is make sure it's operational. Because if this isn't working, then the mower will not start unless it's been jerry-rigged without your knowledge. So you need to know if it's working. So when you squeeze this down, you follow the cable, it comes to here, this should be moving. And it's not. And without it moving, you're not gonna get spark because this is gonna turn all that off. When you walk away from your machine and you let this go, you lose your spark, it kills it. So what we need to do is ensure that this is operational. And I can tell you right now, it's not. And this cable is way overstretched. And it's, it's just not, it's not pulling this like that the way it should be. So your options are always reach down and hold this, give it a little play like that and that's probably enough to let it start. You can usually tell if it's easy to pull or not. If you let go, that'll be a break on the flywheel and see it's really hard. Now when you put it back, now it's free. So now it would start. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna lubricate this cable and see if that'll be enough. I'm gonna lubricate in here and see if we can get this to work. That's number to one. To do that, step. I'm just gonna use a little WD-40, shoot it in there, and shoot it on these moving parts right here. Try to help loosen stuff up. Get that working. Nothing. I don't know if it's supposed to be down or up. Now it's getting a little bit easier. That should start. If it doesn't start after we go through the carburetor and we check the spark plug, then we know that we might need to put some wire around this or something to hold it and we'll put a zip tie on the uh, we'll put a zip tie on the spark plug boot and we'll just pull the spark plug to turn the engine off. But that should suffice. And what happens is these cables get twisted, they get caught up on things, and they get screwy inside their little housings here, the little the little sleeves. And they don't, see that's getting better. They don't want to move. So that should do it, but we'll see. Shoot some more in there. Shoot some more in here. And we'll just let that eat. Oh yeah. Getting there. So another thing you can do too is maybe put a zip tie here. But that's one thing that you can do right off the bat to know if your machine's even going to start. Number two, spark. So look at the spark plug. Look at the electrodes. How much gap is there? Is it so worn out? So I don't know what if this angle works for you guys, but it's not bad. Um, 
wire brush. We'll clean this up. See what's up. Good news is this thing's not all nasty black, corroded with or you know full of crap all over it. We're in pretty good shape. So I don't think we have bad internals on this mower. Simple maintenance. And we might have a, a mower we can use. Just clean it up kind of nice. That's about it. Now you put your boot on. And if you got two people, don't hold this. You can get the shit shocked out of you. Use pliers with rubber handles if you want. But if you got two people, or if there's a way that you can also see, you can set this up next to the metal and pull your handle and see if it sparks. Then you know you got a good coil and all that crap. We'll find out. I only have one person. Well, and I got thousands of you, but for right now, I only have one person. All right, Let's spark plug back together. So we should have a decent spark. We should have decent electric, we hope. Um, let's just check the oil real quick and we'll spin the mower around and get to work on the carburetor. It's got oil. Doesn't look milky like there's water from the radiator. Oh, oh, gotcha, gotcha. Uh, oil actually doesn't look too, too bad, to be honest. I did look underneath, there is a blade, so that's good. Good news. Let's get into this carburetor. All right, so the carburetor is back here behind here. You got your primer ball right here. So I didn't prime it, but we'll tear into this. Looks like a flat tip screwdriver. We'll get this off and we'll see what's going on with the air cleaner and the carburetor. Paper element is not in the best of shapes. But I've seen a hell of a lot worse and mowers still run fine. So we will use this one again. Must be a Briggs. Yep, Briggs, it's a Briggs air cleaner. So Briggs and Stratton, I didn't even look to see. It's a Briggs and Stratton 6.0 horsepower. Uh, look at that, Champion Spark Plug, RJ19LM, air cleaner number 5043. Uh, service regularly with Briggs and Stratton parts. All right. Um, so right here, the carburetor. Underneath here is the bolt. There's the bolt to take the bowl off underneath. So I'm going to probably assume this has really bad gas. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get this cover out of my way with uh, these little seven millimeter or eight millimeter bolts. Get this out of my way and uh, get into that carburetor. Now the throat of the carburetor is right here. So I can spray all the spray I want right here into the carburetor, but that's not what I wanna do. I wanna get into this bowl. I wanna see what we're dealing with because I don't wanna fill this up with fuel and get it fired up with, with carburetor cleaner and then it's, it's continuing to suck in crap, you know? So I wanna see what's in this bowl and uh, drain the bowl. If there's fuel in it, drain it and drain this can the, the uh, tank. There's about a half a tank of fuel in here. That's probably varnish by now. So I'm gonna get this out of my way. So I can do it. One, two. There we go. Yeah, that carburetor is pretty nasty on the outside, anyways. So these little vacuum lines, they're not vacuum lines, they're little breathers for the crankcase and stuff like that. And what happens is they plug it in here and it goes behind this shield and it goes back into the carburetor. So it circulates the crankcase breather. So you're not putting this into the environment. So it's EPA stuff. That's what that is. Um, 
That carburetor doesn't look too, too bad, but it doesn't look too, too good. There's a lot of outside dirt. I'm gonna fill this up and I'm gonna spray this carburetor down before I go any further, but I'm gonna block this off with some paper. Well, I thought I had some carbon choke cleaner, but I guess I don't. Uh, but I do have some starter fluid, so maybe that'll be good enough. Yep, thought it would be. Just wanna clean up this stuff off because when I drop the bowl, I, I don't wanna put the bowl back together with loose stuff falling into the bowl. So I'm just doing a quick, if it falls off now, it might fall in the bowl. If it don't fall off now, it wouldn't have fallen in the bowl. So I'm not gonna lose any sleep over it. Just gonna do what I can. Now, if you have compressed air, an air compressor with a blow gun, which I do, if you have the can air to like clean computers and stuff like that, wouldn't be a bad idea to and get it, you know, finish cleaning it off. I'm not too concerned with it. It, uh, it seems to be evaporating pretty quick. Don't wanna lose that gasket right there. I mean, the inside of the carburetor is really not in bad shape, but this is the bowl right here. Right here's your bolt, probably a 12. Let's see what we got. Probably a 13. Let's see what we got. 13. Now remember from my previous videos, inside the bowl, there's gonna be the butterfly and the needle that's gonna be attached to your carburetor still. So right now, we're just gonna drop the bowl and what's gonna happen is, it's gonna drain all the fuel out of the tank right through this line once the butterfly falls. So be ready, once you crack it, be ready to have a place to catch your fuel. What do I do with fuel that I capture from old machines like this? I bring it to the recycling place, the auto, auto store. And I dump it in their big old giant barrels. Oh yeah, there's a lot of sediment in there. There's all types of chunks of stuff in there. But the bowl, there's some stuff floating in there for sure, so that needs to be cleaned out. Probably means the jet. Oh uh, yeah, I showed you guys in a previous one. Maybe we can get this to flow a little faster. I should just take the fuel line off. There we go. Drain this tank out. That tank's got some good flow. Uh, I'm sure the camera can see it. Oh, I gotta pee and this is killing me. This is torture hearing this, for God's sakes. <sighs> okay, in other videos where we worked on carburetors, uh, on mowers, some of them have your bowl and they have your mount bolt that go up, like on the uh, Toro that we just did with the Kohler. Um, I'll link to that video up here. I'll link to it at the end of this video. It has a bolt that goes up, and the bolt goes up into a little shaft on the carburetor, and then there's a jet that's inside the carburetor shaft, and you unscrew that with a flat tip screwdriver, and when you unscrew that with a flat tip screwdriver, that jet um, is a metered hole that goes up. The tube coming down that this bolt bolts to is threaded, and it has a hole on each side of the tube that sits in the bowl that sucks in the fuel. And I said some of them, when I made that video, are actually the bolt itself is the jet. And that's what sucks in the fuel, and that's what this is. And so look at this. See the schlep on the opening? And there's your jet. There's an opening. And there's an opening. And so that schlep was blocking the jet from letting fuel get sucked into the carburetor. So we need to clean this jet before we install it. And we probably have dirt in the carburetor that got in through there. So we can clean that out. But to clean this jet and to clean this bowl, 
I'll just use a garden hose. I'll be right so back. So now we're going to have clean fuel going into a clean bowl that's held on with a clean jet. So now you have clear passage with these two little holes on each side that goes up into the carburetor. So where does this go? Right here. See the hole right here where my fingernail's touching? That is where the jet mounts to. Right here. That holds the bowl. Okay? So the fuel passes up here, right there. So we need to clean up till we have a good flow. Good clean flow. Pretty much anything to do that. Um, that has a tube, WD-40, will loosen the dirt. Uh, really, anything. And that's all that we're trying to do. Not, not trying to fill up the cylinder, just spraying a little bit in there, let the WD-40 get in there, and it'll loosen. And you can take your starter fluid and blow it out. There you go. Nice. Oh, I saw it. Yep. It's passing up. I have every bit of confidence that if there was something clogged in there, it's out now. Um, so now, the next goal, I'm not worried about the needle and seat because it was flowing out nice and easy before we took the hose off. It was coming out. The bowl kept draining. So I'm not worried that there's dirt in a needle and seat, and if there was, it's out by now anyways. So we can put the bowl back together and uh, with the, the nice clean jet, and we can fill this thing up with fuel, and it's probably gonna fire. We're probably gonna be cutting grass here shortly. All I gotta do now is line this up. You got a little gasket right there. Whenever you're messing with these gaskets, expect them to leak, so be very careful. More than likely, it's going to leak at the bowl or it's going to leak here when you're dealing with old stuff. So be prepared to get a rebuild kit from a local dealer or go online like Jack Small Engines. Find the model number to the engine and get yourself a gasket kit for the carburetor. It's very much worth it. If it's sitting in your garage, it's going to stink. You're going to stink out your garage of fuel. The bowl goes on any old way and just thread, this, thread the uh, jet back up in there. Nice and tight, snug it up, and that'll help reduce the chance of leaking. You can also get like some RTV gasket maker stuff um, that's that's oil and fuel friendly, so just be careful at the auto parts store. Ask for help if you're not sure. Tell them, yeah, I'm just doing a small engine, the car bowl, the, some, some fuel might get on it. I need it to be resistant. They'll point you in the right direction. All right, we got that back together. Here's the fuel line. We could put that back together right here and lock it down with the clamp. Sorry with the new microphone, that was probably loud as hell. That too, my bad. Uh, so now all we gotta do is put fuel in it and we can attempt to fire it up. Let's do it. Remember we got to pay attention to the operator presence level with this thing moving forward. Um, I took the primer ball off. I probably need to put that cover on so I have the primer ball. Hey man, a mechanic tip for you guys. If you're not 100% sure what you're doing when you take something apart, take pictures as you go. Write it down. Remove three bolts from air cleaner cover that goes to the carburetor. Take a picture of the three bolts. So you remember, oh yeah, I gotta, I gotta put them three bolts together. Go back in your notes and, and as you work backwards to put your machine together, check off what you did. So you can be like, oh yeah, that's right. I, I did this, or, oh yeah, I did that. Or where did these bolts go? <laughs> 
stuff like that, man. A lot of problems that people have is they forget what they were doing. That they take a whole bunch of crap apart and they don't know how to put it back together. They got to go to the auto store. And when by the time they come back and they eat lunch or they do a honeydew for their spouse, next thing you know, they're not sure what the heck they were doing in the first place. They forget. You forget. If you don't do this, you forget. I mean, that's that's the way, you know, that's why mechanics get paid to fix things. Because they do it all the time, so they know just by looking at everything where everything goes. We don't. Now we got the primer ball. So we can pull fuel. I hope. I hope we're pulling fuel. Not wasting time here. I don't know. Let's see if we can get it to fire. Operator presence level. Seems like it's working. No fire. Not yet, anyways. Let's see maybe a little bit more on this. So I had to reach down to that mechanism and move it a little bit with my hand. So very valuable lesson everybody. Let's put the air cleaner on. Let's get the yard cut. The condition of the blade is not so good. Screw it.
I don't think I put enough fuel in it. I can hear it. But anyways, I'm gonna finish mowing and I'll be back. We'll fix the weed eater. All right, I uh, broke the pull cord on the last start after I said I'll finish up. <laughs> it uh, seemed to have let go way down deep. I'm just gonna reattach it off camera because this video will be way too long and we're gonna get started on the weed eater. not the lightsaber that's awesome it's the Jedi master holding it help you I will teach you I can mm. all right guys the um, the weed eater and the blower were not able to be fixed I spent too much time on them already and uh, I don't have I don't have a, another carburetor to put on that weed eater and I'm not gonna order one no and the uh, not for a home light and the um, the blower the stud for the carburetor is broke off in the cylinder head and I tried to use an easy out to get it out and it, and the, it must be cross threaded in there and that's why it broke in the first place uh, and it broke my easy out so I wasn't able to do that either um, so I'm just gonna blow this off with my my uh, steel handheld blower but I was at least able to mow so of the curb finds we did get a mower out of the deal, so for a half a day of trying, we at least got a mower um, to work. It needs gears for the front end, it needs a belt for the transmission, and it needs a new blade. Other than that, for a curb find, I mean, you go out there and you can make some money for about, I don't know, $100 worth of parts, and you got a self-propelled with a six-horse Briggs & Stratton engine, so 
you got a pretty good mower, I guess. So that's it. I'm going to cut this short. I do appreciate you guys very much, and I'll see you guys on the next one. Tell me about the whistle.